We will now continue with the programming of the MC2000 T2 controller. Let's start by going to the rear panel of the system and switching on the unit. The first screen that appears shows the Kuth logo. The second screen includes brightness adjustment in the lower right hand corner. This is the only screen where you can adjust the contrast and you adjust it by moving the control knob left or right. This display is currently in the addition mode and you are now ready to create a program. In the addition screen with the cursor on line 1 enter the text required using the alphanumeric keypad. For this specific example I will use ABC123. Using the asterisk key you are able to insert special symbols including parentheses, hyphens, dashes, etc. The arrow key located here is where you can switch between uppercase and lowercase characters. Now we are ready to adjust our character height, width, font, etc. You press F4 to open the font window. When you press the rotary push button once, the cursor positions itself at the first column, which is the character height. When you press the selector knob again, the cursor appears underneath the current value. All the values in the controller are metric. The character height and all subsequent values can be changed in two ways. One is to use the rotary push button to scroll to the desired value. The second is to type in the desired value into the keypad. Once the desired value is set, press in the rotary push button once to enter the current value. In our example, I'm using 6 millimeters. Now we will move the rotary push button clockwise until you have moved the cursor to column 2, which is the character width. Just like you did for character height, to adjust character width, press in the rotary push button once, then scroll the rotary button to the desired value or enter it on the keypad. This value is a percentage of the height with the default value at 100%. To enter this value, push the rotary push button in again. For now, I will use the default 100%. Now we will move over to the font setting. Rotate the rotary push button clockwise to highlight the next column and press the rotary push button. You can see some of the standard fonts we have installed in the T2 controller but the default and most common is the Goulom font, which is what I'll be using here. When we move to the next column, this will allow us to adjust our spacing between characters. This value is a percentage of the height, with the default value at 25. This value can be adjusted the same way we did before, but I'll keep it at 25 for our example. The last column is used to set the type of marking, either Viberpeen or Dotpeen. Viberpeen produces a continuous looking line, whereas Dotpeen produces a specific dot pattern. Pneumatic machines are capable of doing either Viberpeen or Dotpeen, but electric machines can only do Dotpeen. To select Viberpeen, you must change this column to Auto. When using Dotpeen, there must be a numeric value entered in this column. With a higher value, you create a higher dot density. Typical dot peen marking is slower than viber peen marking. Since in my example I'm using a pneumatic machine, I will leave this setting at auto for viber peen. Now press the escape key to exit the font window and return to the addition screen. Now we press the F5 key which will display the force and speed settings. Press the rotary button to highlight the first column. This is the force setting and is used for electric machines only. On pneumatic machines, your force is controlled through your pressure regulator. The settings range is from 1 to 10, with 10 being the highest force. On pneumatic machines, this value should be set at 3 and should not be changed. The second column is your speed setting, also with a value range of 1 to 10, with 10 being the fastest. On electric machines, this value has little effect on the depth of mark. For pneumatic machines, using the Viberpeen setting, 
the speed greatly affects the depth of the mark. The lower the value, the deeper the mark. I will use a good middle starting speed of 5 in this example. Now we press the Escape key to return back to the main edition screen. Press the F6 key to open our positioning window. Moving the cursor to the first column, this is the horizontal starting point of the first character. Again, this setting can be adjusted by using the rotary push button or entering the value in the keypad. You will notice as I adjust the X position with the rotary push button, the marking head moves accordingly in the X direction. The second column sets the starting point of your text in the Y axis or vertical direction. If we leave these two at the default zero values, it will place the text to the home position located in the upper left hand corner of the window. If you insert a value in the Y position, it must be greater than or equal to the height of the character. Since my character height is 6 millimeters, if I do enter a Y value, it would have to be 6 millimeters or greater. Here, for example, I will enter in a value of 9 millimeters. The T2 controller has the capability of doing a test mark. This will show the exact position of the mark on your part. When we push the blue T button, this will start the test feature. The marking window, along with our text in its position, will be displayed on the controller's screen. The marking head will also do a dry test run showing you the actual mark location. At this time, we can either go back and make adjustments if necessary or begin marking. This is a good time to explain the recommended standoff settings for marking your parts. Each pneumatic machine is furnished with this standoff gauge. The recommended distance from the tip of the pin to the part can be set by using the thick side of the gauge or 3 16 of an inch as I'm showing. To adjust the standoff on the portable machine only, use the points on the support legs or adjust the position of the positioning brackets. For machines with electric heads, consult the Kuth manual or the Meco mini manual for the recommended standoff based on the force being used. A standard automotive type feeler gauge can be used for this. For both pneumatic and electric heads, varying standoff distances, other than the previous recommendations, may be required for specific applications. Consult MECO if you have any questions regarding your specific standoff application. To program multiple lines, we must first move the cursor to the second line. This is done by pressing the rotary push button to highlight the entire line. Rotate the push button clockwise to highlight line 2 and press the push button to select line 2 and bring up the blinking cursor. For this example I will enter MECO. Repeat previous steps to program line 2 using the desired parameters in F4, F5 and F6. Parameters in F4 and F5 will automatically repeat if no new values are entered. The F6 X value will also repeat if no value is entered, but the Y value will automatically increase to position additional lines directly beneath the preceding line. Since our Y value is 9, our second line should fit underneath our first line of text in the test window. To save our file from the edition screen, we need to press F3 to open the file menu then press F4 to display a new file and enter a file name up to eight digits. To eliminate the default zeros, press the spacebar. In this case I will name the file 123456 and press the push button to confirm. Once you press the push button, the screen should refresh and you should see the program saved in the list of files. To open an existing file from the addition screen, press F3 to open the file menu. Scroll the cursor to the desired file and press the push button to select. Here I will go into the file menu and select file 123456 
that we just saved. 